Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. Dust off your cold weather gear because we are wet. It's early March, the eastern basin of Lake Ontario is free of ice, and I'm with Captain Pat Loveland. We're plying the waters of Mexico Bay for skinny water brown trout. We've got the Michigan Stinger pattern running and the Opti tackle boards, and then we're off to Henderson Harbor for non-stop lake trout action. We're utilizing some brand new BSO custom baits built for us by Northeast Troller. And all I can say is the action is fast and furious. You're going to look at great fish and see some great tackle tips along the way. And it's all coming up right now. This one fellow's coming on a, on a gold purse. I think he's still hanging there. Had a lot of weight on the strike. All we're doing here, guys, is running a 9 16 bead on that weight. Pat and I were just talking. The temperature's going to be down the surface jumping out there. Yep. The temperature's come up to uh, basically 41 degrees. And it's been a consistent, uh, you know, 37, 38 all the way down here. So here he is. He's on, Pat. I'm going to give you the rod, and I'll take the camera. Perfect. Let him come just like that. Good fish. Like I said, this one is coming on a gold perch, Michigan Stinger, on the inside. Running a number four water gremlin split shot on this one to get down just... A little bit deeper. Did you mark that one in, Pat? I did. Or how's this guy feeling, Pat? Uh, I can't really tell. I think he's swimming with it. Yeah, but you know, he laid the brakes on hard. Yeah. I think it's a bigger fish, and he's just, uh... I think just, he's just coming in with it. Just not moving. Comes the opposite Yeah, there he is. Yeah, that's a decent fish. Yeah, he is a decent fish for sure. Lower that rod back right up for me. I'm grab that opti tackle board here. Whoa, there we go right here. Okay, got that opti tackle off. Easy. Big fish. Hold on just a second. I'm gonna back her down just a bit. We're in 30 feet of water, so we don't have much to worry about. I love when they get that soft. Stay right up here with me. Big old brown right here. And we got him. Man, what a nice fit. Look at this guy right here. What a nice brown that is. Nice silver too. And then right down that side. Kind of trim. Probably fresh in on the shoreline. You can see he's not that real football belly. Like a lot of these browns get. But uh, undoubtedly as that water temperature comes up, that's going to get a little bit better. And I think that these browns are going to put a little size on. Good job, my friend. All right, really? That was awesome. a good fighter. <laughs> Long pull back. Long pull back on that rod right there. Smoke it. Finally tripped the board out there, Pat. Coming out of a turn, what was really cool there is coming out of a turn in 25 feet of water. That's a big fish. He's motivating right there. Yeah, he is. Look at him. He is going like crazy. I'm going to grab this rod out of here and see exactly what we've got going. This might be a, this might be a lake trout or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna clear this. You wanna clear that weight rod? Okay. Pat's clearing this weight rod right here. I'm just gonna hold the box. I can get that. Here comes that split shot. Just lightly pinch it off there if you can. Way. A little bit of, little bit of weed on that. I noticed catching that. Beautiful. Okay, buddy, you want? There you go, pal. All right, I get the big one. Yeah, you got the big one. This is a good fish. Um, 
because we're basically at 105 or 110 foot set. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rod that's running in the second position, I'm gonna move it up into this holder, back to drag just a little bit, and that will start to feed out while Pat's uh, fighting this fish. We're coming right back onto the action. This is gonna be a good one. You know, it all, that fish, it's either a huge brown or he dog pretty heavy. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if you've got like a 30 inch lake trout on. He put the brakes on hard. And one of the things that I've always said while fishing in the spring of the year, if you tie a 10 pound brown tail to tail with a 10 pound laker in that cold water, that laker will drown that brown every time. Here comes that opti tackle board. Okay, you're clean. Put that board down right there. We're in 11 and a half feet of water, Pat Lovelin. I'm, I'm gonna guess it's the brown. I turned your boat a little bit. He did go out to the side there, but yeah. we're just gonna have to be careful with him. Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know, he's, he's acting like a brown now yeah. because he's pumping. He's prop, yeah. when, he laid the, uh, when he laid the brakes on back there, I was thinking, this could be a big gray. Could be a big gray trout. Hard to say. How many feet on your counter, bud? 40. 40? Yeah, this collar right there. All right, I'm gonna pull in that here. Just uh, turn the wheel here. Stay right with me. Awesome. Oh, nice that, that is a nice fish right there, dude. He is a hammer. He is a hammer. Take, let's take, take our time. We'll wear him right out. How's he feeling, Patty? Yeah, he's decent. Oh, boy, what a big fish that is. See him coming right here in the water. Do you want to take him on the right side? Yeah, let's take him right here. Okay. Watching you. Maybe he's going to let you do that. Maybe he's not going to let you do that. Stay right with me. Stay right up in the corner. And we'll move him when the time comes. Nice and easy. Right, Caddy Shack. Got him. What a smashing brown that is, dude. Woo! What a jumbo that is. Holy cow, and I was right on the Caddy Shack. Man, let's get him out here. We'll take a look at him. There's that Caddy Shack. That's a classic. That's a UV Caddy Shack on a hammered spoon. That guy's got more of a football belly on him. Pat, he laid the brakes on, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Tell yeah, me he, about fighting that fish. You could tell right away it was a de he's one of our biggest fish over the so far, and he hammered it. You could tell he was pumping right away all, all the whole time. Yeah. And he turned sideways back there when I first set the hook on that fish. He turned there, and I thought, man, that's heavy. That could be a lake trout. But you were 100% right when he started doing this stuff, knifing yep. back and forth. The Laker's going to come in deep. And he's going to come in low, and that uh, that brown he was moving all over the place. He is classic. And how can you beat a freaking caddy shack at this time of year? You know oh what I mean? Oh my god, I'm stoked! <laughs> Fish in March this early in March. This is awesome. Well, the browns are coming over the transom one after another. In fact, Captain Pat and I had no issue attaining a quick limit of brown trout on this day. Hot Michigan Stinger Spoons included the Gold Perch, the Caddy Shack, and the Green Chin Music. Now it's a rarity that we get to fish in the first few days of March on open water. So the outerwear, the jackets, and the bibs that we wear are critically important to our comfort while we're out there on these early season days. It's a perfect opportunity to do a quick product review on KMDA's new midweight ice runner suit. Let's take a look at it. Hey guys, we're out fishing uh, in Mexico Bay. We're doing a little uh, early spring brown trout fishing and lake trout fishing and what are we wearing for gear? Thought I'd take a time uh, to show you a little bit about what we've been fishing with early in the season, late in the season, and what I just came through the entirety 
of ice fishing season with. I'm a hot-blooded guy. Uh, you've seen me do the product review on the ice runner suits from KMDA in the past. How could you beat it for $199? Now those heavyweight suits are up around $230 bucks for the jacket and the bibs, but KMDA and Ice Runner came out with a brand new suit this year, and it happens to be the suit that I'm wearing right here. You can see it's slimmed down a little bit, I don't have a pocket here on the right side, but I do have pockets with Velcro gathers here, and I've got Trico lined uh, pockets right here around the belly as well. Front zipper so you can get in and out of this suit quickly. And down here on the sides, you can open these right up and uh, they zip and you'll notice that you've got the gaiters here on the inside to keep snow and ice and water from coming up uh, the bootleg and getting your pants wet. So it's got all the things that you need in a quality suit. But what's nice about this is it's waterproof and it floats. So when we're out here on Lake Ontario in the spring of the year like we were today, um, it's the perfect thing to wear. The jackets, the same kind of setup. And today, I didn't even put the jacket on, but it's got a hood that zips on and zips off. So if, if you don't wanna have the hood on the back of the jacket, you don't need it. We can open this thing up. If you've got keys, one of the things that, uh, one of the things that I like about this setup is that you've got these interior pockets here on both sides, plus you've got Velcro gathered pockets here, plus lined pockets here on the inside as well. And on the uh, bibs, one of the things that I didn't show you is where it zips right here, there's a hidden zipper. So if you've got to have a spot for your keys or, or your wallet, uh, fishing license, this is the kind of place, me of course, I've got a lighter in there because when Pat Loveland needs a cigar out there in the water, I gotta make sure that I've got <laughs> fire. So there's all kinds of really good um, attributes to this particular system, but here's what I like the most. It's not quite as heavy as what we normally wear for ice fishing season. So me being hot blooded coming off ice fishing season, I wore it every single solitary day of the ice fishing season uh, this year. Now, temperatures were not as cold as they normally were. If it was going to get down to 10 below zero, 20 below zero, I probably would have put the heavier weight suit on. But this is absolutely the perfect combination and this combination currently and this video will get dated but currently this this suit is 199 dollars at kmda inc uh, com. kmda inc.com i'll scroll that across the bottom of the screen so you folks can take notes on that and it's just a lighter weight suit that still has plenty of insulation it floats it's got all the attributes that you need to put pliers, your your uh, your keys, your wallet, your license, everything in it, and uh, it's just the perfect weight for doing these spring trips or late fall trips when the weather's changing just a little bit and it's a little bit too cold to go in just a regular rain suit. This ice runner suit from KMDA will do just exactly what you need it to do. Days later, Captain Pat and I find ourselves near our home port of Henderson Harbor. We're fishing the mouth of Stony Creek in approximately 45 to 50 feet of water, and the lake trout bite is on. Pat and I are fishing a series of new custom baits that are now available from Bill Safe Outdoors. Good job, you're at 60 something feet, I can see on the 20D there. This is awesome. What a great fish. All of the custom stuff, Pat, that uh, Christian Carlson's making for us at Northeast Troller is on fire on these big lake trout out here. One of the cool things about uh, having a tackle manufacturer that can work closely with you and adapt and adjust is that when you've got 43 years professionally in the fishing business like we do here at Bill Safe Outdoors, you vet certain things out over the course of the years and you know what works <clears throat> and what doesn't. A lot of times you can walk into a tackle shop and there's 200 baits on the wall and you can point to the three or four that you absolutely know are gonna work uh, for sure. And when I call Christian Carlson and say, look, I gotta have these painted, I'm gonna send you some pictures. I'm gonna give you some ideas, lay this stuff out for me. 
when we coordinate well, he gets that stuff done. And I've got great vetted items to run on uh, e-commerce or for people to just call and buy over the phone. And Pat is using one of the combinations that we love at Bill Safe Outdoors right here. This UV Dragon is a bait that I've been fishing. The Dragon is something that we came up with when we were kids fishing Lake Ontario out here. And in subsequent years, we put a glow panel on there for a glow dragon, a UV panel for a UV dragon. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, they are great items to fish with and uh, they always work as you can see. It's nice to come out here and have items in your repertoire that are vetted that you know are gonna work. Not if you're over the top of the fish and the rods aren't going off, it's not because you don't have good quality stuff in the water. It just may be that you can't dynamite the fish into a strike on that day. Watch him right over your shoulder, Pat. He is a dandy, isn't he? He's a dandy. Big old trout. Big old trout. Yeah, isn't that cool? DEFCON 5. You gotta have the pink and you gotta have the black. I'm, okay, I'm gonna have you step to the left just a little bit and I'm gonna get right in here for him. Wind down on him again if you can, okay. Let's back him right up. Man, oh man. What? Hey, jumpy. Right in. Get him right here. Check this out. Check that fly out. He's out. He's off in the net, but here's the UV panel on the back side of that. Flip it. You've got green over the herringbone. That's the dragon part of it with the UV, but look at the colors in that DEFCON 5. We'll actually get it out of the net here and we'll show it to you closer. There it is right there. There's the DEFCON 5 that's been such an amazing fly. And uh, yeah, there's the dragon right there. You can see the green on this side, but more importantly, look at with the UV panel on the back side of that, how that looks in combination with that fly. And when the camera was off, you were talking to me a little bit about what that fly looked like coming in in the water. Yeah, so when we put it in, I, I didn't really get a really good look at it, but when she came out of the water, this thing had a lot of iridescence. It had a lot of, a lot of flash in it. It, was, it looked great coming out of the water. Yeah, and it's one of those fly combinations where nine out of 10 fishermen on Lake Ontario are not gonna run a fly like our DEF CON 5. And that's a huge mistake because especially early on trout, early on kings, I'm talking, you know, April, May, June, July, before we get into the heavy greens of summer, that thing is absolutely deadly. Well, it definitely looked great coming out of the water. Well, you can just see the, look at that little purple iridescence matching up with a fly. Yeah, I what mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Let's pop that guy out here and we'll watch you, we'll watch you release that fish because I've got some good pictures of him already. Put him right in. There he goes. Nice trout, buddy down and away to the depths mister good job pat there's a fish on this rigger right here he hasn't popped it wind down just give it a little strip there he is dude you're into it nice and that fish that fish is coming on the spoon right there that's a that's a black silver northeast troller this is one that's set up to the bso specs right here Slow her down just a little bit. He's traveling. He came right across to the right side of the boat there, didn't he? Yep. Beautiful. And I had pushed that down a little bit. I had that running at 28, but uh, I pushed this rigger down here, you can see, to 41. And what I did with that, Pat, was uh, just ran the lead back on it 50 feet and stuck it at 35. Because that's about the area that our dipsy hits have been coming, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. What we're running here, guys, uh, just to bring everybody up to speed is, you've seen me fish my uh, Okuma Convector 20Ds on Okuma Deadeye seven and a half foot rods for planer board fishing. Well, in the Lund, I fish that same Okuma 20D, but the rod that I use is uh, Ugly Stick GSX 200, and that's what Pat's fighting this, uh, fighting this fish on. Great for down rigging, um, I like them for planer board fishing too but they're a little stiffer in the tip than the okuma dead eye is and i think that okuma dead eye being a little bit more limber is forgiving when you get a big 10 pound plus or 10 pound brown or 10 pound plus 
uh, lake trout at the back of the boat, I think customers tend to lose less of those fish with uh, the Okuma setups. But this uh, Shakespeare is a great, great setup. And uh, Pat's doing a good job on the spoon rod here with that right now. It's working great. Really good fish right here. You can look right down, there's that Okuma 20D right there. He's at 40 feet. That's what's nice about those. Got a great, great drag system in them. And uh, with the line counter there, it's easy to tell looking over the shoulder of a customer or a fishing buddy and knowing exactly where that fish is. Excited about this one. He's staying deep with that spoon bait. He is. Black silver. The old NK28 color in black silver. And I've got Christian Carlson at uh, Northeast Troller painting all these spoons to BSO specs. And I am so not surprised that we're on with that spoon. I saw him pick that rigger up and just start to bump it. I got the release a little bit tight. And that's why the rod didn't fire. But he was there for sure the whole time. Great bait. There he comes. See him? Yep. Good fish. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's a Jumbazilla right there. No question. Look at him. Just trying to shake that thing. No question about it. Jumbozilla. Just going to put that can. That net right there. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. Anybody who doesn't love these big lake trout and cold water, they got ice water running in their veins. I mean, it's so cool. You can see the white flame on the on the tips right there. He is hammering. Beautiful fish, Pat. Beautiful fish. Keep coming right here. He's hooked up towards the front. Okay, back him up, Pat. There we go. What a nice, nice looking lake trout. There's that, uh, there's that Addy hook right there. Beautiful. And that black silver right there, that Christian Carlson bait. Beautiful, beautiful. We've got a million big kings and a million big trout on that. Hook positively right there in the front. Let's get him out. We'll get a picture of him. That fish right there. He is a dandy. A nice big old trout there long and here you can see those nice orange tips on the fin with the white edges. Man, that stuff's just beautiful. You can see that glowing almost, Pat. Yep. You know what I mean? Coming in the water. Beautiful, beautiful lake trout. Well done, sir. Another great fight. You know? Yeah, I, I like this uh, early lake trout fishing. They fight like crazy. They're cold to hold on to. <laughs> you are on. And Pat says that it's in a similar spot to where our first fish hit. So I can't tell you whether this is a lake trout or not. I'm assuming it, the way he took it. I didn't slow it down quite as much as I did the last time, Pat. So we're sitting in good shape. We're at 51 feet of water right here. He's got a lot of head shaking. Nice. Uh, I'll have you step over on the right side, Pat, because that sun's over here on the left. That'll give you a chance to come in here and see exactly what you're doing. That one again on the moon eye fly with the treasure chest. How about that thing, Pat? What a combination that is for trout. I think this is going to be the due time that uh, this thing's going to go all day today. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That is a, that is a smashing flasher. Anytime we get into late season lakers, when we get past the end of August and into September, where those fish like to switch, from a cowbell presentation to a flasher fly combination, that baby and uh, this one right here, the hybrid dragon, are riding on the bottom because they are deadly. Well, there he is back there. I see him. Nice. That one coming at uh, that one coming at 95 again. We're just rocking along. For those of you who are wondering, uh, you know what we're doing for speed: 2.2, 2.3 is the mo right here today and we're trying to keep the boat in 45 to 65 feet of water we're just running a long oval here right outside of stony creek and just outside of drown island those are good solid man look at that thing hammering <laughs> oh man what a fish easy on him holy smokes that dude is off to the races man yeah. 
Vice Laker. Slowed it down there just a little bit. Gosh, Pat, I was talking to everybody right there, giving my uh, giving my captain's insights, and I had to go back to that because that guy was going bananas. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see that dipsy diver coming. This one's got a long, this guy, <laughs> this guy, you're gonna be up on the nose of the boat, but not this one, because this guy has got a long, long, long king lead on it, Pat. I mean, if this leader's not, I don't know, 14, 18 feet, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be surprised. We'll try to move him inside that wire if you can, Pat. Wind down and move them to the left. Go ahead and walk them if you have to. I'm gonna get a nap pole here. Man, what a big fish that is, dude. You can take them in that right corner again. I just wanna wind down to them. Here he comes. What a what a jumby. What a jumby lake trout that is. Wow, wow. Dips wow. diver. We're running that uh green chartreuse on a two and a half setting there it is again there is the uh, treasure chest beautiful combination silver with the uh, Mountain Dew panel in the glow green and then white with cracked ice on the back side and of course that uh, that moon eye fly is a winner that's always been solid on probably, big trout. probably gonna have to keep that guy because he was down in the gill raker you yeah. see the blood coming off him right there but what a monster trout, Pat Loveland. Tell me about fighting that dude. Well, he first off, he slammed it. He, he deep throw the, the fly, and he had a lot of head shake. That early season, you know, they just got a lot of fight to him. Yeah, and the cold water. Yeah. I mean, lake trout, some people don't think they're uh, their game, but in the spring of year, they are big sport. Almost had to guess, and maybe it was a salmon there for a minute. Yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful fish, Pat. Holy cow, he's huge. And there it is right there. There's the treasure chest with the moon eye fly. That's the way it's working right here, guys. We are gonna get them loaded and get things back down in and uh, we'll see if we can't get another one on. Awesome fish, Pat. Well, Mother Nature certainly smiled on us. What a rarity it is to get to fish blue water in Eastern Lake Ontario during the first couple days in March. Pat Loveland, good job today. Great brown trout action and great lake trout action. I hope you folks enjoyed the tips and techniques that we shared and also the look at some of the new custom Bill Safe Outdoor baits by Northeast Stroller. If we can get them in your hands, give us a call. We'll be happy to ship them to you. I'm Captain Bill Safe III. Join me here again next time. Thanks for watching.